I understand there's going to be some OU folks that want to fight, but like I can name nine other wide receivers that have been better than D.D. Westbrook in the NFL. And yet now I look at the Jacksonville Jaguars and I wonder if they're looking at Sixers and going, we got to trust the process. Meanwhile, LSU got to trust the process. All right. So let me walk this out. Ron, you were familiar with the news that Jamar Chase has opted out of playing the 2020 season. Yes. Okay. Quit on the team. Say it again. <laughs> this man don't care about your team. Yo, he took the number seven jersey. Did you know that? Oh, no. Okay. How about that? So the number seven jersey at LSU is their talisman jersey, right? It's their messy jersey. It's their number 10. I thought it should have gone to Derek Stingley Jr. Grant Delpit, who won the Paycom Jim Thorpe Award, agree with me that it should go to Derek Stingley Jr. And then Jamar Chase wanted the number seven jersey because he wanted a challenge for 2020. Because after last year, with 84 catches, 1,783 yards, 221 yards in the national championship game over the dead body of A.J. Terrell, who was so good that he got drafted in the first round last year by the Falcons, that he needed a challenge. So they gave him the number seven jersey. And after last year, from which his daddy, or last year, last month, his daddy Jimmy said, no, I don't want him to play, but he's a grown man. He said he wants to play. Apparently, it wasn't even the COVID that got him opting out. It was an agent in his ear. Talk about, yo, man, you number five at the lowest on most draft boards. You really going to play with that, with, with, with this, this rich kid at quarterback? Turns out Jamar Chase said no. So he joins Kerry Vincent in choosing to opt out, which means that 15 of the 22 starters that LSU had last year are now no longer going to be playing football at LSU. You got the rich kid at quarterback who just loves to hunt, which I have many things to say about, but, you know, we'll get to that. And then you have Damon Clark, Jabril Peppers, and you got to figure out who your third dude is and Bo Pelini's 4-3. You're going to ask Derek Stingley to do all these things, but the silver lining here, I think, is the wide receiver group. But before I get to the wide receiver group, like, Ron, I've been catching all the noise from LSU fans in the comments because I keep telling them they're going to catch five losses, which in a 10-game season means they're going to go 5-5. Five and five. Where do you peg their record at in 2020? No, that's about right. But if I'm an LSU fan, I would have, like, I'm looking at my other LSU fans. I'm looking at the other people in the conference. He's like, you know this, you know this season's just for fun, right? <laughs> like, oh, we're just playing these games. You see what kind of year it is. You see what's happening out there. <laughs> it's it's just a wild time to to be caught with all your bills due and you only got three dollars in your checking account. That's that's where LSU is right now. And it's not so much and it's not so much their fault that they're gonna catch a whole bunch of losses this year. Student loans just kicked in too. Like that's how the Jamar Chase drop it out feels. Yeah, like no, they they got their they they got their wages garnished heavily. So what you mean I pay child support? I ain't so, never paid child support. So if if there's anything that you that they could do is like they can roll into the season and say yeah now we finally get to have this underdog now now we finally get to be now we can have the story that we want right nobody believed in us and you know maybe they can turn a five loss season to a four loss season. Man, you better enjoy being the defending national chance while you can, because you about to get tested. You about to get tested. All right, so at wide receiver, you got Terrace Marshall, who was a five-star, might have been the third best wide receiver on that team last year with Justin Jefferson showing out, and of course, Jamar Chase. But the depth at wide receiver is tremendous from a talent standpoint. Racy McMath is a dude. Six foot three, two twenty four. He runs like an Oldsmobile 442 on the NAS. The man is American muscle with a heavy foot. He was kicking and moving around so much in the womb that his daddy called him racy because that's what he was doing was racing around. His mama claims, and I kid you not, that he didn't learn to walk before he learned to run without falling over. Just one of these real Louisiana stories. Okay. Kayshawn Booty out there at New Iberia was number one player in the country coming out of high school. You know, they have Trey Palmer. They got dudes. I just, they don't have any experience. And that's yeah. the problem. So, like, do you think 
do you think they're going to treat it like you say, like a mulligan? Or you think they really expect this talent to just be like, nah, we reload as the, the crappy cliche goes. They're going to say it, but they're, they're going to be eyeballing and they're going to be pointing to the scoreboard that has an asterisk to it the whole time. <laughs> and the only way that they're not going to do that is if they somehow run the table. Ain't no way they run the table. They play in the SEC West. There's no way. Yeah, no, so so they, they go ahead. Get, so they have a year to develop their talent. At, I'm not sure how all the uh, – the eligibility changes, and then they're going to be ready for oh, 2021. Oh, let me let me put you on game. Nobody's eligibility counts this year. Everybody gets to get a mulligan this year. So this season's just one big practice. That's you how know, it if, feels. If, That's how it feels, if, right? Which, like, which is, which is fine. Everybody wanted football to come back. It's back, and so now all they get. So now what they get to do is develop their talent. Man, all right. And anybody that is talented is going to leave because there's no reason to stay. I'm going to go practice for the pros. But if you're in the Pac-12 or the Big Ten, you're really pissed because now you had a free year of playing football that you don't get while everybody else gets to get better. <laughs> like, they're so salty right now. Like, this podunk conference that they're in. No matter that it's unsafe to play football. We, we could have been getting another year in for free to say nothing of how you're going to do scholarships next year. Like you're going to ask these coaches and these universities to take on 15 to 25 extra scholarships, or you're going to keep the cap where the cap is and tell all these kids that thought they had an extra year of eligibility. Yeah. You no longer on scholarship. We got to keep it moving. Oh, that one. <laughs> we keep the restriction. Matter of fact, we might even lower it a little bit and watch everybody show up to Fresno state or <laughs> I don't know. Wake Forest. No, you, Somebody, somebody's out there is about to become a power. No, you joke. But like we've had 82 FCS to FBS transfers this year. I could see 82 going the other way next year. And all of a sudden we're going to look around and Nickel State is killing people. Mm -hmm. It's like, wait a second. Nickel State beat Texas? Yeah. They took on like 21 FBS transfers. Turns out a lunch, bunch of dudes from LSU, Auburn, Alabama need a place to play. <laughs> Who knew that Houston was such a hotbed for uh, landing transfers? I mean, Houston. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Houston. All right, so LSU also has the number three recruiting class in the country right now after picking up two commits in one weekend in Jalen Shedd out of Olive Branch, Mississippi, three-star tight end, and Nathaniel Wiggins out of Atlanta, four-star cornerback and a top 100 player. But I want to get there by saying that they rank at – 271.45 in points. Oklahoma has recently earned crystal balls from Kamara Wheaton, Bryce Foster, and Savion Bird, right? Or I should say from staff writers that are predicting them to go to those places, right? What's interesting to me there is that that's a five-star, a four-star, and a four-star. And if Oklahoma were to add all three of those dudes to the recruiting class, say, today, they get to a score of 275.66, which is good enough for number three in the rankings, which brought them from 14 to three and put them squarely in the discussion for finishing in the top five. And Oklahoma hasn't finished in the top five in the 2021 recruiting rankings since 2010, which is also a wild year because they didn't have a single five-star in that class. They just had a bunch of really quality four-star players led by Tony Jefferson, who I hope ends up playing either for the Browns or the Baltimore Ravens, but remained unsigned, even as Grant Delpit is going down what would think is a season in the injury. And Earl Thomas got cut for being a cancer. Like, literally. I mean, Anthony Lynn had to go out and talk to people at San Diego, uh, San Diego at L.A. and be like, look, I'm not adding Earl Thomas to this. Y'all keep telling me how good our defensive backfield is. Why would I mess with that? Because Derwin James is hurt. Yeah, well, we're not that hurt. You not that hurt? That you don't want to add Earl Thomas? That's how bad Earl Thomas is. And to get back on these Earl Thomas stories, his wife and her friends tracked that man down via his Snapchat location and then held him up at knife point, took his gun, and held him up at gunpoint. That's the Earl Thomas experience. I wanted the Earl Thomas experience in Dallas. Apparently, they don't want the experience in Dallas. But I'm also just here for the jokes. 